Hey, what is up guys? Beataplater95 here, and today I will be revealing Battle Beatamon Fire Spirits! Revolver Hades. So before I get into the review, I just want to quickly say, if you want to pause the video for a moment, go get a bowl of popcorn, you might want to, because this might be a pretty long review. This is the Sonokong variation of Revolver Hades, meaning it came with the special DHB armor done in Revolver Hades colors, and I got three strike shots rather than the standard one strike shot, one beat Dama, which is pretty cool. I did pick this up for being 40, 50 bucks on eBay if you guys want to pick one up. I do recommend this over the Takara version just because it's more easy to come across and it won't cause you an arm and a leg. Granted, I do have six Takara versions that are all factory sealed and graded, but that's a different story for a different day. We'll start off with Revolver Hades and then we'll go do all the other craziness. So let's check it out. So starting off, this is the Revolver Core. For those of you who are not familiar with the Zero Two system in Battle Beatemon Fire Spirits, the Beatemon weren't as generic as they originally were. The first Zero System Beatemon, they were just a core, and some would have drive strips, some would occasionally have rollers. But for the most part, they were the exact same Beatemon. They just had different armors, and some of them had one-handed grips, maybe a magazine or barrel, but they weren't very special. They were just kind of there. Zero Two came into play, and unfortunately, while we never got the toys in the U.S., we did get the anime, and we only got like half of it, unfortunately, but I can't complain. It was pretty good. And the way the Zero Two system works is these beat -em on all have their own unique cores. There's, I want to say, Chrome Raven has a ball-bearing core, and then you can also buy an extension for it, which makes it more powerful and has more bearings. There's just all kinds of insanity and I love it. I am planning on getting a Gil Scorpion and Cobalt Saber Fire in the near future, so look forward to that. But let's get to the core. So this is made of very nice quality plastic. Sono Kong doesn't really seem to disappoint as much as Takara or Hasbro. Their quality is pretty high and I do enjoy that. Now checking out just the aesthetic of the core. You have this nice little rail here which is mounted into the pegs where the legs would attach and the trigger is stuck in here and basically this is what well, the entire trigger it doesn't wobble side to side and then you have one clean shot. The spring is also very powerful. It's a very thick spring and it just makes a really nice satisfying almost clicking sound when you push it and it just feels great. The front of the core has, well, the most notable feature, the revolving chamber with a drive shot, or sorry, drive strip inside of it. And we're going to open that up to check out the gimmick. This is hinged, so if you uh, want to manually load strike shots or bidama, you can. And it's kind of like a little purgatory chamber. Basically, there's no hold parts in this beat em on. There's just a little tiny metal, or not metal, but plastic part which just kind of pops up. And what you would do is you would launch the Bidama into the past here into this little like purgatory chamber, and then depending on where your drive shot or drive strip is uh, standing, that will depend on the shot you fire, which is pretty cool. It's a nice little gimmick. Speaking of which, let's check out the firing modes. So the generic mode for this is drive mode. We have left spin, my personal favorite, back spin. And we have right spin, and I will say the right and left spin isn't very prominent in the shots. Uh, if you do test the core and you fire marbles on top of marbles, it does make a pretty good sound that makes you think that it's really spinning, but it doesn't show very well. And as you can see, Bidama, or I guess the stealth shot really, is nicely locked up and I can freely spin the core as I wish. Now, my version, the sticker sheet, was dried up beyond belief. Uh, I could not put any stickers on this. In fact, when I took it out of the bag, uh, the part, the stickers just fell right off. So I do have the sticker sheet, but I'm not going to be able to mark these because it's always going to be in drive or reverse drive shot mode. Without further ado though, let's check out the rest of the beat -em on now, something pretty interesting about the Zero Two Beatemon is, 
Well, what would normally be your Proto-01 is just a head, some arms, legs, and these two little tiny plastic rings for the arms. Uh, you only get one of these, or I guess one pair, really. Don't lose these, don't break these. These are very brittle, and if they break, they break, and this will not be secure, and it's just going to be a mess like crazy. So we are going to start off by adding on the head, which does take a little bit of skill to do. Make sure it's all lined, and then carefully add in the bushing or bearing strap, whatever you prefer to call it. Find the other one. Like such. That one's always the tightest one. And then we have the feet, which the arms, legs, and uh, the armor. Uh, they're done in it's a gunmetal, which is a very odd color. Uh, I did check out one of the Takara Tommy reviews, I guess Takara at the time, and uh, it was done in black, not gunmetal, so that's an interesting color scheme, but it does break up the monotonous black pretty well. So here is your Proto Zero One with a uh, revolving chamber on it. You could probably kick some butt at a tournament with this, but I guess, I guess. Let's make this into the infamous Revolver Hades. To build Revolver Hades, it's pretty straightforward. You peg the armor onto the arms and onto the feet. It's pretty much nothing different if you've built the original Battle Beatemon. These guys just have different colors, different designs, nothing super unique. And just pop on very nicely. Uh, I do prefer to do the arms and legs first before attaching the uh, visor and the helmet because it's a little bit tricky to do. So I usually keep the arms like this because it's a pain. Now, in the instruction manual, it tells you to get the sides of the helmet and then have the visor loosely hang in there. Uh, that doesn't work. What I prefer to do and what I found works just the best is to peg in the visor like such and then build the helmets onto the head because there's parts that can break. It's from 2004, plastic wears over time, and it's not going to make you go crazy in rage. If this wants to go in, and then our little lock piece right here. Got to take off the head. Now, it also tells you to put in the magazine first and then the tip of the head. I found it easier to just have it slide on like this and just kind of pop it in like from the top. It works a lot better, it stays nice and secure, and you have a fully functioning revolver Hades. Now, something that people tend not to look at with this beat em on is. If you hold it like this, it does look like a gun. Uh, yeah, so someone had originally thought you hold it from the magazine and fire it, and that was supposed to be like reminiscent of Gatling Hades, but uh, no, it looks like a uh, 44 revolver. Okay, well, it looks good, but the real question is who wore it better? I mean, revolver Hades, revolver type? It's a good question for the future. So I don't have a lot of time to really film test videos or just test Revolver Hades in general. I'm going to do a separate video for that and I'll probably upload it either later today or Saturday. It depends. So with that being said, let's check out the DHB Advanced Armor. Now something to notice right off the back is these stickers here. Those are already on like pre-assemble. This was this little tiny segment in general is actually comes pre-assembled and it's in its own little baggie. You just add on the rail. It looks pretty nice. It's a cool little gimmick they have going and you simply reset it by dragging this little bit across a rail and when you shoot three times you lose big red X. Going on to the armor itself, this thing is improved stupendously from uh, the original one. If you have seen the original DHB armor, it's just a three block piece. It looks horrendous and you just drop a beat em on into there. 
And that's it. With this, we actually finally got stabilizers that are articulated, so it won't be an issue falling over. I do remember the Chrome Zephyr, when that thing was loaded with like five marbles, it just falls backwards. This can hold the Revolver's uh, magazine loaded to the top and not fall. Thank you, stabilizers. Color scheme is great. The black and white definitely contrasts very well. And the blast shield is actually molded, not molded into it, but it's built into the uh, armor. As you can see, it's part of the core. It houses the trigger, the little suspending uh, weights back here. The stabilizers, they are attached to it. These little pegs are attached to it. This thing isn't going anywhere. And it looks nice. And then to attach this, there's a little pet uh, slot here, peg here. Just slide it on. Clip it, just like the cartridge system, and there you have it, you've got your DHB system. Prepping Revolver Hades for a direct hit battle is pretty simple. So before you disassemble the entire Albedemon, you do get this special head part, and it looks like the extension for a DHB unit, but that's not really it. It actually mounts the magazine onto the back of the unit, so we'll see that in a moment. But we've got to prep up Revolver Hades, so here's how you do it. First off, you remove the arms and the head. The head segment doesn't need a lot of work, but I do prefer to have it removed just so it's a bit easier to modify and basically pop this up and this will go back on top like such and then we just take off the legs and leave that to the side. You have a glass display base, go for it, it'll look pretty cool actually. Uh, as is. So we drop on the head and you will hear a nice little pop and be the rings. Once again I kinda wish we got a second pair of these little bushings because you know one breaks or if you lose them you're pretty much in trouble. <laughs> I mean I guess you could use modeling cement to fix it but it would look pretty bad and uh, you'd be down a revolver Hades. Now my only complaint with this is that the arm is like very loose. Like, look at that. Uh, I don't know if that's just my unit, but it's loose right arm. It works nonetheless. Now, to attach the magazine here, we get this other head part that I showed you a bit earlier, and we slide it on top like such. And then, like we attach the head, we align this little peg hole right here with the peg and simply like such and it holds pretty well Revolver Hades DHB I really enjoy it I might actually pick up the uh, Winner's Cup battle set just so I could test it out and then have you know accurate uh, you know tournament setting but I doubt I'll ever do it all that aside this does look really nice. The uh, gunmetal definitely does help break up the DHB unit. The white, there's just enough white to really make it look good. The grips are okay, and I can't complain about that. I will say that a small trigger like that is not enough. I kind of wish there was an extended trigger, or maybe some way I could make this a one-handed beat em on like my uh, Chrome Raven. But that's said and done. It looks awesome. It's Revolver Hades. I mean, it's rev awesome just because it's Revolver Hades, so I really can't complain. My final thoughts on this Sonokong Revolver Hades DHB Advanced Custom Set. Try saying that ten times fast. Buy it. It's really worth the money. For those of you who aren't into beat em on, or you're just getting into it, or you never heard of Battle beat em on, Revolver Hades is like the beat em on you want if you grew up and you saw uh, Fire Spirits dubbed on Cartoon Network. This thing is amazing. Aquilus, the user, was a badass. He traveled around with a giant talking gray wolf and it was great. He kind of becomes God for a little bit. That's why I have the Evangelion mat going. Underdog becomes God. Totally. It's a great buy. The original Takara version of Revolver Hades 
runs you anywhere from $92 to $180. That's why I keep buying them like crazy because they always go up in price. This set, however, by Sonokong, it was mass produced. Uh, it wasn't a short print set like the original Revolver Hades, so there's plenty of them. They never go for more than $60 US. It's an awesome purchase. I mean, the strike shots alone, three stealth shots, oh yeah, love it. Great set, I highly recommend it. And without further ado, I really got hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out. But seriously though, revolver, revolver, someone needs to do something about this.